Well, call me old fashioned, but I like my opinion articles to be straightforward and to the point. Contention, evidence, and then conclusion. But what happens if you have no evidence for your position? Well, that's no barrier to expressing an opinion these days. You just go with the new age modern form of opinion article, ideology, analogy, and then leap of logic. This article, again from the drum, is a perfect example of what talking heads resort to when they haven't got a leg to stand on. Frankenstorm Sandy bore down on the US East Coast yesterday, but did climate change cause Sandy? Last year's exceptional drought in Texas cost farmers billions of dollars and set records for the driest 10th month period on record. Was the drought caused by climate change? Were the devastating bushfires on Victoria's Black Saturday exacerbated by climate change? Some 50 years ago, Humphrey Bogart died due to cancer of the esophagus after decades of chain smoking. Did tobacco kill him? The guy down the street who's now dying of lung cancer before he had a chance to quit. Is he suffering because he smoked? In each of those individual cases, it is difficult to be certain whether tobacco smoked caused this particular death. Likewise, for extreme climatological events, it is difficult to be certain how large a contribution climate change made to this or to that specific extreme event or disaster. This uncertainty represents a fundamental conundrum when a cause, such as smoking or climate change, is only probabilistically related to an effect, such as cancer or weather extremes and disasters. Ooh, conundrums and probabilistics. This man must really know what he's talking about. How do people respond to that uncertainty? People respond in very different ways. The tobacco industry claims that smoking does not cause cancer, preferring instead to think of medical science as an ogliopolistic cartel that manufactures alleged evidence linking smoking to cancer. Ooh, oligopolistic cartels. This man just keeps getting smarter and smarter. But wait, I think I know where he's going with this. We all know what the ideology is. Well, now here comes the analogy phase. Climate deniers likewise accuse climate science of being riddled with corruption and of manipulating or misrepresenting real-world scientific observations. Both claims smell of desperation and appear laughable to anyone who has only the slightest acquaintance with how scientific research is conducted. And yet a reference to Bogey's pack-a-day habit as proof that we're poaching the planet apparently smells of cinnamon buns. Scientists, by contrast, understand probabilistic causation quite well. It is for this reason that most climate scientists are hesitant to attribute specific events to climate change, although techniques are beginning to emerge that enable this attribution, and instead prefer to point to global trends. Trends such as the tripling of the number of weather-related natural disasters during the last 30 years or the inexorable rise in sea levels. Climate scientists predicted those trends long ago, and they are virtually certain that those trends would not have occurred without us pumping billions of tonnes of CO2 into the atmosphere. You think you ogliopolistic cartels impress me? I've got some big words of my own. Try argumentum ad vericundum, or in English, appeal to authority. One of the most egregious logical fallacies. In the absence of any evidence to support his conclusion, the author attempts to convince us that minds greater than our own have already settled the matter, and so we should all just shut up and listen. But only to the scientific minds that agree with him, of course, and never to the myriad of dissenters. So does the author present any evidence whatsoever? Well, why bother with that? Come on, everybody knows climate change is an issue. The public is also beginning to understand that climate change presents a real risk. After the unprecedented series of disasters that has beset the US in the last few years, from droughts to tornadoes to repeated flooding to yesterday's Frankenstorm, Americans are once again beginning to smell the science. A recent Pew poll has revealed that acceptance of climate change has rebounded by 10 percentage points in the last few years, notwithstanding their political leaders' deafening and cowardly silence on the issue. And now for the final show-stopping argument. We are living with climate change. It is happening now. Debating the extent to which Frankenstorm Sandy was put on steroids by climate change is a distraction. Oh, nothing like a good carriage return to bring home a point hard. Let's paraphrase the whole article. We all know that climate change is causing major weather disasters. Only a small group of desperate deniers dare make their laughable claims against the science. The same sort of people also claim that smoking doesn't cause cancer. All the scientists that matter know that climate change is a reality. Everybody knows this. It's true and it's happening now. Continuing to debate the matter when all the smartest people in the world have already come to consensus is a waste of time. The work of a 10-year-old? No, actually the work of a professor of psychology, Stefan Lewandowski. 
The same genius also authored a study claiming that climate change deniers are more likely to believe the moon landing was faked or Princess Diana was murdered. Maybe his next paper ought to be a study of why intelligent academics so frequently resort to ad hominems and reframes in place of evidence and reasoning. Anybody who's of a reasonable age and who's attained a master's degree and spent most of their life in academic circles is bound to have a higher IQ than me. Yet even somebody like me, who owns several Max Walker books, has no trouble demolishing Lewandowski's supremely ridiculous arguments. The quote that's sometimes attributed to George Orwell rings true. There are some ideas so absurd that only an intellectual could believe them.